In this video, we're going to talk about the chain rule for functions of multiple variables. First, let's recall how the chain rule worked for a single variable function. If w is a function of x and then x is a function of t, well, the co composite function w, where the independent variable is actually t, if we want its derivative, we take the derivative of w with respect to x and then we multiply it times the derivative of x with respect to t. So that was our chain rule for a single variable function. Now we're going to extend this chain rule to functions of two variables. So for functions of two intermediate variables and one independent variable, this is our chain rule. First, w is a function of x and y. Those are what are considered the intermediate variables. If that function is differentiable, and then the intermediate variables are functions of t, and those are differentiable, then when we form the composite function w, of f of x and y of t, then its derivative can be found with the following formula. We take the partial derivative with respect to x, and then we multiply it by the derivative of x with respect to t. And then we take the partial derivative with respect to y, and then we times that by the derivative of y with respect to t, and then we add those together. So we have two different notations for writing this chain rule, and there's actually a third one. So what we can do is we can replace the partial derivative with respect to x, and we write it as the partial derivative with of w with respect to x. Same thing, the partial derivative of f with respect to y, we replace it with the partial derivative of w with respect to y. Now when we do this, we actually are meaning two different things for w um, on the left and right of this equation. So on the left-hand side, w implies the composite function. Uh, independent variable is t. On the right hand side we take w to just be a function of the variables x and y. Okay so for this chain rule we have this diagram here and if you start with your composite function w that's the dependent variable. It depends on x and y which are the intermediate variables and then those ultimately depend on t which is the independent variable. So starting from the top you take the partial derivative of w with respect to x and then separately with respect to y, and then you continue down and you take the ordinary derivative of x with respect to t, and then over here the ordinary derivative with respect of y with respect to t, and then you add those two products together, and that's how the chain rule works. This diagram is called a dependency diagram, and you'll see them often when it comes to the chain rule in several variables. All right, so let's take a look at an example. We are going to use a chain rule to find the derivative of this function with respect to t, and then we are given what x and y equal in terms of functions of t. So here's our chain rule. So we are going to take our partial derivative of, here's w, with respect to x, and then multiply it by the derivative of x, which is cosine t, with respect to t. We'll do the same thing for y, and then we'll add those two together. Okay, so in the partial derivative of w with respect to x, y is a constant, so the derivative here is just the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. We know the derivative of cosine t is minus sine t. Over here in the y terms, we have the partial derivative of w with respect to y only, so think of x as a constant, so the derivative here is just 2y, and then derivative of sine is cosine t. Simplify that just a little, and then you actually are going to substitute what x and y equal into this derivative. So this is the derivative, but notice it still has x, y, and t in its um, expression. So we're going to substitute the fact that x is actually cosine t, and then y is actually sine t. Okay, so this is the derivative, but if you notice, we actually have minus and plus the same quantity, so it's zero. All right, so you might be thinking, well, what if I substitute instead of at the end what x and y equal? Why don't I do it at the beginning and then take the derivative? Well, you can. So same example, but this time we're going to first express w in terms of t, then differentiate it directly with respect to t. So here's our function w. We're not going to find the derivative yet. We're actually going to do that at the end this time. So first substitute what x and y equal. Simplify it just a little bit, and this equals 1, because if you recognize this, this is the Pythagorean identity. So then we take the derivative of our function w, which is actually just equal to 1, 
and we know that the derivative of constant is zero, so therefore we have the same results that we got using the chain rule. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at functions of three variables. So our chain rule gets extended here. Hopefully this looks like it makes sense from the last chain rule with two variables. We just add this z term. So we have what we had on the first chain rule with two variables, and now we add the partial derivative of w with respect to z times the derivative of z with respect to t. Here's our dependency diagram for this function of three variables. So just notice there's a third path, our third route going down. We have to take a path from w with the partial derivative with respect to x, with respect to y, and then with respect to z. And then once we get to each of the ind intermediate variables, we take the derivatives of each of those with respect to t, and then add up all their products. In this example, we're going to use a chain rule to find the derivative of a function of three variables, which ultimately rely on the independent variable t. We have here our chain rule for three variables. Now I have this in blue just so you can visually stay organized with what we do here. We're going to take the partial derivatives of w with respect to x, y, and z, and those will be in blue, and then multiply each of those respectively by the derivatives of x, y, and z with respect to t. So our function w, I just plugged it in to each of these terms, okay, and then I plugged in course, um, respectively what x equals, what y equals, and what z equals. Okay, and now we're going to take the derivatives of each of these. So the partial derivative of w here with respect to x, well x is the only variable, so everything else consider it a constant, and so this is the derivative of w with respect to x. We know the derivative of t with respect to t is just 1. The derivative of our function w with respect to y, same thing like with x, everything else is a constant, and so this is the derivative with respect to y. Derivative of ln t is 1 over t. And then last, the derivative of our function w with respect to z, well z is the only variable that we're considering because the other ones are considered constants, so the derivative is just 1. And then the derivative of e to the t minus 1 is e to the t minus 1 times the derivative of the exponent, t minus 1, which is just 1. After we simplify a little bit, we get this expression. And then we're going to substitute, just like on the other example, what x, y, and z equal as functions of t. Okay, so I have the substitution here in green. And then last, we'll simplify if possible. And it looks just a little bit nicer, and this is our derivative. Now we're going to consider the case when there's two independent variables instead of just one. We have been looking at functions where the independent variable was just t. We're going to extend this now to two independent variables. We'll call them r and s. So the chain rule for two independent variables, and we're still going to consider three intermediate variables, looks like the following. We actually have two partial derivatives, one with respect to r, one of our independent variables, and one with respect to s, our other independent variable. Basically, both of these formulas, we take the partial derivative of our function w with respect to x, y, and z, and then we multiply each of those by the partial derivative of x, y, and z with respect to r, our first independent variable. And that's going to be dw, uh, the partial derivative of w with respect to r. Similarly, the calculation for the partial derivative of w with respect to s. So here's a visual for us to see what's going on when we have two independent variables and still three intermediate. So w is a function of three intermediate variables, x, y, and z, but ultimately those three variables depend on the two independent variables, r and s. So this is a visual of the function, the composition of the function. The next part b is the dependency diagram for the partial derivative of w with respect to r. And then similarly over here, part c, the partial derivative of w with respect to s. So if f is a function of two intermediate variables instead of three, but we're still considering two independent variables, then our chain rule actually gets a little bit simplified. Notice these partial derivatives, they have no more third term. So it gets a little bit simplified once you have two intermediate variables instead of three. Then we can go a little further and if your function is only of one intermediate variable, then the chain rule gets even simpler. And here's a dependency diagram for the one variable case. 
Let's try an example where we're going to find the partial derivatives with respect to r and with respect to s of our function w. Notice w is a function of three variables, x, y, and z. And then we're given the functions r, um, x, y, and z, which are each in terms of r and s. So we're going to start with, because we can only do one at a time, the partial derivative of w with respect to r. So here's our chain rule. Okay, and so we're gonna, we filled in w, and then respectively we have what x equals, the function that y equals, and what z equals. All right, now the partial derivative of w, remember, with respect to x, y and z are considered constants, so this is just one. In the middle here, with respect to y, x and z are considered constants, so the derivative is just two. And oh, in the back here, z is the only variable we're considering, so the derivative of z squared is 2z. That's what's in blue. Now, the partial derivatives with respect to r, 1 over s is just a constant in front of r, if you want to think of it like that. And so its derivative of r is just 1, so 1 over s. Over here, s is not the variable we're considering right now, so think of this as a constant. So the partial derivative with respect to r is just going to be 2r. And in the back over here, the partial derivative of 2r with respect to r is just going to be 2. So after we simplify, we end up with 1 over s plus 12r. And so that's our partial derivative with respect to r. Now we're going to do a similar calculation, but this time for the partial derivative with respect to s. Okay, so the same setup, except for now we are taking the partial derivatives with respect to s. Notice what we have in blue hasn't changed because it's still the partial derivatives of w with respect to x, y, and z. But what did change was what's here in black, the partial derivatives with respect to s. Now s is your variable, so think of this as s on the bottom of the fraction, so it's s to the negative 1 power. You can use your power rule and get this derivative. r is just a constant. Over here, since r is a constant, we're only considering the derivative of ln s, which is 1 over s. And over here, there is no s factor or term, so the derivative is just 0. And then we get negative r over s squared plus 2s for this partial derivative. The last thing that we're going to discuss is implicit differentiation. So we have a formula here for implicit differentiation. So first, we're going to suppose that we have a function of x and y and that it's differentiable and that it equals 0. Now this function is going to define y as a differentiable function of x. So if all this is true, and as long as the partial derivative of this function with respect to y is not 0, then the following formula is true. The derivative of y with respect to x is just equal to negative the partial derivative of our function f with respect to x divided by partial derivative with respect to y. So this is a really nice formula and it simplifies implicit differentiation quite a bit. So here's a dependency diagram for why this works. If you have your function f which depends on x and y and we work down this dependency diagram, if we go down the left we have the partial derivative of our function with respect to x. Now we're going to multiply that by the derivative of x with respect to itself, which is just going to be 1. Okay. And then on the right-hand side, the partial derivative with respect to y times the derivative of y with respect to x, which is just like y prime, or in this case we call it h prime. And then you add these two together. So you get the partial derivative with respect to x times 1 plus the partial derivative of y times dy dx. And now remember when using implicit differentiation, we're going to ultimately solve for dy dx. So if we set our function w, which equals f of xy, equal to 0, then we have that this equation here equals 0. And then if you solve for dy dx, you end up with the theorem that we just looked at. So let's try this out. We want to find dy dx for this function. And we're going to use our formula that involves partial derivatives. Okay, so we just have to take negative of this quotient here. So notice the top is the derivative of our function where x is considered the variable and y, think of it as a constant. So I put the zeros here so you can line things up. The 
derivative with respect to x, y is a constant, so the derivative is 0. Right here, the derivative would be negative 2x, and then here, the derivative of sine is cosine, and then the derivative of the inside, well, x is your only variable, so the derivative of 1, of x, I'm sorry, is 1 times y. Very similarly on bottom, the partial derivative of this function with respect to y, treat x like a constant and differentiate with respect to y, and you have this result, and then it simplifies to the following. Okay, so it works out very nicely to use this formula, and I say that because I want you to consider what it would take if we did it the other way using single variable differentiation. So just for fun, we're going to do the same calculation using single variable differentiation, not using partial derivatives like we just did. And here's what it takes. All right, so it is quite a bit longer. You differentiate both sides of your equation with respect to x, and then we would have to simplify and eventually factor out a dy dx and then solve for it. So this formula, this theorem, it makes our calculations quite a bit easier. All right, and so we can extend this implicit differentiation theorem to three variables. If you have your third variable, which we would call z, we just have the following extension to the formula or the theorem where the partial derivative of z with respect to x is just negative the partial derivative of f with respect to x divided by the partial derivative with respect to z. And then very similar for the partial derivative with respect to y. Okay. And again, this is where our function, we set it equal to 0, but it defines our variable, in this case z, implicitly as a function of x and y. All right, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching.